All right, guys, welcome to the CSLP podcast. Uh, today, I have Anya here with me. She is the CEO of Encore Insurance. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Anya, and I'm the owner and CEO of Encore Commercial Insurance Services. Mm -hmm. We are based in Beverly Hills, California. Uh, 15 years doing this business. Mm -hmm. I came from Russia almost 20 years ago. And it was always my dream to come to Los Angeles and mm -hmm. to have my insurance business. So I want to say that dreams come true. Definitely. In California. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you said you came to uh, uh, the United States about 20 years ago. Um, were you already working in insurance in Russia or what made you actually go into insurance? Do I look that old? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not, uh, no, it was a, I was a child actually in, in Moscow. And oh, okay. before we moved, my father asked me what you want to do when uh -huh. you come to America. And um, I said, I want to be in business. He said, well, what kind of business? There are so many businesses. And he started naming me different right. industries in business. And when he came uh, and when he started talking about uh, insurance, I said, you know what? I think that's the business I want to be in. That's the business. And since then, it was stuck in my head. Mm -hmm. And when I came to America and I pursued my dream and coming, we came first to Ohio. Oh, um, okay. Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio? Columbus, Ohio. Oh, Columbus, Ohio. Columbus, Sorry, Columbus, yeah. Ohio. <laughs> Columbus, Ohio, yeah. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, so we kind of, um, uh, that was, uh, and I turned 18, I finished high school. Mm -hmm. And the last day of high school, I had the tickets to California. Oh, wow. I didn't even uh, attend my graduation. You didn't attend your graduation? No. How long were you there in, in Ohio before you ended up moving? Five months? Five, five years? years? So yeah. five years, you didn't even go to your graduation? No, you no, no, I was, I was uh, going there in school. Oh, okay. Uh, school, and then when the high, 12th grade, uh -huh. and we finished high school. Right. And you know, have a ceremony. Of exactly. The grad I yeah. didn't go because it was, I had to wait two more months, and I couldn't wait oh, to come to California. Oh, gotcha. So I moved in May, and that's it. And since then, I'm in Los, uh, in Los Angeles. In Los Angeles. So you moved for directly to Los Angeles right, yes. right away? Yes. Uh, so when you moved to Los Angeles, right away, were you already, like, doing the insurance, or did you start working in, in other fields first? I just, uh, you know, I was 18, so I started working in different fields. I was working in retail business in Victoria's Secret. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, uh, How long did you do that for? For like maybe two years. About no, two years? Le le maybe less than that. Maybe, maybe less. Were you, were you saving up money to eventually start your business, or was it just something that you just needed a job right away? I needed a job right away. Gotcha. Be, uh, because I came to Los Angeles, it was like, three four hundred dollars in my gotcha. pocket <laughs> okay everything i saved from the high school that i could earn <laughs> right right and i didn't want to take any money from my parents i wanted to really be independent okay so that was a little tough couple years in the beginning and but they, all the money almost i, I earned in victoria's secret i spent it back in victoria's secret oh gotcha <laughs> <laughs> so that was um it was me and my sister. We lived oh, okay. uh, together. Also, when you moved over here, you moved in with your sister, yes. or did you guys find an apartment together? We found an apartment oh, together. Gotcha. Right. Okay. And we lived, uh, li we lived like this for a while, and but I was always pursuing my dream to be in insurance. I didn't know uh, how to start. Right. So I was trying to apply for jobs, you mm -hmm. know, in insurance uh, agencies. But a lot of people say, no, you're too young. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes a long time to teach you, and then maybe you will leave, and so right. on. So it was difficult to uh, find a job. Kind of so like find like a mentor, too, to kind of like let you know how to get into the insurance business at first. So nobody kind of like wanted to take you on at first. Gotcha. Nobody. Well, mm -hmm. there's a few people that regret it after. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. They Definitely. told me that, too. Definitely. But uh, I still, I didn't give up on that. Uh, but only thing I really knew about insurance was car insurance. Oh, okay, okay, I okay. didn't even know types of insurance there is, what the insurance is. Right. Uh, except I know you have to have car insurance. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually I found an ad in a Russian newspaper. Okay. Uh, that Beverly Hills office in Beverly Hills mm -hmm. looking for an um, assistant in the insurance okay. office. So I said, okay. I have to do it. I think you have to apply that. right I have away. To apply. And I did get the job. <laughs> oh, you got the job. But gotcha. uh, I got it <laughs> kind of by force because oh, okay. I went to one interview, then I went to another interview. I went to f like five different interviews. Right. And it was not very standard interviews you usually go to. Okay. It was uh, uh, two brothers who had agency. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were... They were very not like uh, corporate about it. Gotcha. So, and, I want, and they said, okay, you know, we'll, we'll let you
let you know if you got hired or not. After the five interviews? After five <laughs> interviews and every time. So I was uh, I was in college at the same time. So gotcha. I was like in college. What college were you going to? Uh, Santa Monica. Santa, Santa, oh, Santa okay. Monica College. Cool. And um, and I was like, you know what? I have to call them and just find out. Follow up. Follow, follow up, up. And they'd be yeah. like, if yes or no, I cannot be in this. I know, can't wait. This is I my dream. Exactly. <laughs> like either tell right. me yes or no. I have to start somewhere. You know, I, mm-hmm. I, I always thought that time goes by so fast and mm-hmm. I have to do it right now. Exactly. So I called them. I said, listen, just tell me. I, am I hired or not? Just no more. Please don't waste my time. Exactly. <laughs> no more interviews. <laughs> exactly. You can say that. And she was like. Okay, you know what? Yeah, you hired. You can just come on Monday. So that's wow. how I started my career. In what were you? What were you doing? Like, what were some of your responsibilities as working as an assistant with them? Filing first, mm-hmm. you know, answering forms and uh, simple stuff, like you know, gotcha. office stuff. That uh, it's uh, and eventually I started learning more. I went mm-hmm. to get my license. How long did that take you to get your license? Well, that doesn't take you so long. It takes usually r- like. A I don't remember a couple of months, is couple of months, you know, to sit through the classes. Probably same like is your requirement, right? Have, exactly. You know. So you sit through the classes and then mm-hmm. you apply for the exam. And did they help you get your license? Were they motivating you to get your license? No. Or oh, okay, they didn't want you to get your license. No, they did. They, they did. Didn't okay. care. I'm still in touch with them. They're oh, that's still good. my friends. You that's know, good. like it's so. Well, they gave you your first opportunity here, so that's did. good. That's yeah. great. And I'm very yeah. thankful until now about that. Um, they're still very good friends of mine. Gotcha. But, uh, so I was there for like four years. Four years? Four okay. Years. And mm-hmm. the whole time, w- did you right away quit your job at Victoria's Secret? Yes. Okay, and then you, but you, were you still going to school during the four years that it took you to get, or I that you were working with them? Oh, you quit school. I okay. quit because I was actually not quit. I kind of finished, but not finished. I had four more math classes to finish, and I'll get my... I could have gone. Keep going. Yeah, keep, keep going. going. But I kind of stopped on that because. Because you already reached that, you're like what you wanted to do, basically. Absolutely. Gotcha. And you know, it's studying and making money. It's two separate things. Exactly. Definitely. You know, you can uh, have all the degrees and it takes you, I know, some of my friends are in school until now getting their master's and this. Mm-hmm. But uh, I- it's good to study. I'm not saying Definitely. Yes, it's very good to study, but pursuing your dreams in a career and studying. feel like you wanted to be an entrepreneur from the very beginning you already had that itch in you like i, I just need i, I just want to get to california start the insurance exactly business. i was very uh, hesi- not hesi- not hesi- not hesi- excited about excited it. about it gotcha so that's how four years passed and then i uh, this i was actually for the f- maybe three years in one year i was catching on the work very fast mm-hmm. and i was doing all the work they mm-hmm. were traveling, right. <laughs> and I was doing from A to Z. You everything. knew how to, the everything, all everything. the work. I gotcha. was like actually owning my own business. People were calling just me because I was taking care of the whole thing. The whole bit. Bu- you're the running the business. business. Yes, <laughs> I was running the business right. actually. And then eventually, um, I talked to them and I said, you know what, I want to go and by your own. own. By my. By so myself. is that is that is that how you ended up starting your own business? You're yeah. like, you know what? I think I have the sufficient experience already. I know the ins and outs. So you know what? It's my time to start my own business. Absolutely. Do you know the year when you started your own business? So it started 2003. 2003. 2003. Or two. Yeah. 2003. Around 2003. Okay. Well, where where would you st- where did you first set up shop at? When you Beverly started, Hills. Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills. So when you started, uh, obviously you didn't go from zero to a hundred, right? No, <laughs> no. What were some of the barriers you faced when you first opened your business? A uh, barrier they faced, like some struggles that you went through. You know what? I don't want to brag about it, but I think mm-hmm. it went pretty smooth for it me. It went pretty smooth. It was pretty smooth. I didn't think I faced any because I mm-hmm. been think in this business. It was just a matter of getting the name getting corporation which is right. it's just paperwork paperwork and uh, it was it meant to be you know it was meant I to think be definitely. things that are meant to be there's no struggles in that exactly no i i, de- I definitely you know? do agree with you uh, luckily in your case it was uh, like you said it was, it was smooth right yes. so how were you requ- how were you acquiring customers when you first got started okay so when i got my office it was a very small office actually mm-hmm. i shared it with my sister because she opened a different business okay so we were sharing an office i had desk she had desk and mm-hmm. uh, everything set up all the business set up so i started cold calling oh know? okay i started cold calling and who were you cold calling like bi- different businesses businesses, businesses. Different gotcha. businesses you know to start well i had some of my clients from where i used to work mm-hmm. trying to call me and oh, okay. me 
but I believe in karma. And right. I believe, and I told them, I said, you know what, I will, I'm not able to take you to assist because you, yeah. you're, I don't mind helping you out if you need some help and I can talk to them and, you know, like right. still help you out as a customer, but you're customers of mine. They're my friends. Too. Exactly. So I, I believe in karma. Definitely. It, it doesn't <laughs> Uh, so and I'm still in good terms with a lot of my clients from that agency. You know, Definitely, so you don't want to burn bridges. No. Basically, don't no. burn bridges, especially for the, the the people that give you your first Absolutely. opportunity. Absolutely, Definitely. Absolutely. I Absolutely. really believe in that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I start getting cold calls, and usually uh, before I close one deal, I get two re uh, two referrals from that person, and then that's how it starts. You just started building up, right from the so right from the very beginning. That's good that that you were able to acquire. So nobody told you like, okay. Um, you know, this is how you're going to start your business. This is like your mentorship with them, how they taught you how to do the ins mm -hmm. and out of insurance. Um, when you're doing the cold calls, how did you get that idea? Did you already know that? Is that how were you acquiring customers in the other company? Or you're like, you know what? This is this is the, the platform of how I'm going to obtain my customers. Yes. So this is what I'm going to do. That's what were, were you going like door to door to different businesses as well? Yes, I did. Oh, OK. Yes, how I was did. that? Uh, in the beginning, I was very awkward. Uh -huh. You know, to like I went to body shops and you know like uh, different retail businesses mm -hmm. and in downtown LA there are right. manufacturer companies. It's kind of weird because people look at you like, "What are you doing here? We're like in the middle of doing business, and you're with your insurance." You right. Know? But then it got comfortable. Then people were, you know, some people responsive. Some people say, "You know, we're too busy." It's a normal thing. I didn't take it personally. Of course. That's the number one thing. You don't take it personally because people are doing business and they're not waiting for you all the time. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so or it's maybe it's just a bad time for them. Or maybe it's, it's a, bad a bad time. time. You yeah. know, it's, uh, so it's, uh, it's part of business. You know, it's whatever. It's, uh, it's your business. So whatever it takes, you need to, to do to make it happen. Exactly. Now, let's say somebody wanted to try to get their insurance license, mm -hmm. right? What, what's some advice that you would give them if somebody wanted to, uh, you know, start going to school okay. uh, or their courses that they want to take to to really get into the insurance game? What's some advice that you can give to someone that wants to start their own business? Okay. Uh, first of all, I don't think it's a good idea to start your own business without having experience gotcha. in insurance because insurance is very responsible. Mm -hmm. well, all businesses have that, but mm -hmm. in insurance, you're dealing with somebody else. Um, financials, basically, right. you know, in financial services. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure when people, because when people come to you to trust their uh, business, right? Uh, they want to sleep good at night. So exactly. they want to make sure people who take care of it, they know what they're doing. They're not just going by, here's the application, I fill it out, uh, send it off, and maybe the insurance you're getting is not even adequate to your business. So they gotcha. want to know that they can advise you and be your like consultant. Right. You know. So I think we get experience first, mm -hmm. but before you getting even experience, get the license. Gotcha. Because when you start working for an agency and trying to study for a license, mm -hmm. it confuses you a lot. Gotcha. So I think it's the best to get your license, work mm -hmm. for an agency, get the experience, get the right? experience, and then whatever whatever you whatever your ultimate end goal is exactly absolutely i always see that as well in a bunch of different industries like mm -hmm. when you go and you're and you're studying the material but when you actually get to the work side of it it's totally different in some cases which is very confusing for some so people so true because uh, i yeah. don't think i even right now if i have to go take my license again i don't know if i will even pass it it's like so and i'm not a good test taker gotcha i didn't pass it on the first time anyway <laughs> How long did you study before you took your first test? Well, the way I did, I finished the classes, I finished all the courses. It was like all jammed in my head, and you know, all that. Mm -hmm. plus I was working already in the agency. Right. So, uh, so a lot of things didn't like click yet. Um, and then I was studying, like you know, a question answer, question answer kind right. of thing. That's the best way to do it. Like, mm -hmm. don't occupy your head like trying to get all this information and learn right. that information mm -hmm. because it takes experience. Exactly. It's only experience. Do you still sometimes go back to like the book or something? No. Like let, let's say something you don't understand or do you, do you already have that based on your experience? It's experience. Just based on the experience. experience. Gotcha. Because mm -hmm. every day in that industry, no. Mm -hmm. it, it, it license, they gi it gives you basic stuff, you mm -hmm. know, like basic rules, ethics. You know, oh, stuff like, like that. what you were studying is more like basic ethics and stuff Absolutely. like that. And yeah. then when you branch out to actually get the experience, it's more like com customer communication, Absolutely. what best fits them. So what are some, what are some of the type of insurances that you offer? 
I offer business insurance for uh, several uh, different industries. Okay. Uh, manufacturer, wholesaler, contractors is a, uh, one of, I think, my biggest one. Okay. Um, I do workers' compensation, number one. Mm -hmm. Liability, course of construction, which is a developer's policy that they need mm -hmm. to have uh, to cover during the construction. And I do quite a few of those in Beverly Hills and in around the lake. Um, uh, professional liability, different mm -hmm. type of bonds. Uh, what are some of the, the, what are some of the, so like you say you, you offer the business insurance. Give us an example of like maybe one of the companies. You don't have to say the name, but just like what, what does the, the insurance provide and what does it cover? Okay, well, each business is individual, so okay. that's why you have to take each client as individual because maybe they're in the same trade, Okay. but what they do particular is different a little bit from what uh, other contractors, uh, even uh, like uh -huh. a general contractor, for gotcha. example. Uh, maybe one is building uh, homes only, another one only doing commercial, so oh, okay, each okay. policy, and there's different, it's very complicated right. to explain mm -hmm. in a few words, mm -hmm. but basically, each liability, it's not the same as other liability, or gotcha. each worker's comp will not be the same as another, as worker's, another worker's comp. comp. So it's very different. It's very individual. Now, does every business have to have worker's comp? Because I've heard, yeah. I, I've heard, yeah. So th this is um, when, um, you know, when the contractors come, obviously we're a contractor school, so we help contractors get licensed. Um, I feel like during the, when we're explaining, like, you need worker's comp if you have employees, I feel like uh, mm -hmm. There's a, mis a miscommunication with them that they believe it's strictly only for construction, no. which I try to tell them it's not, mm -hmm. right? But every type of uh, the business, if they have employees, it will require workers' comp, it's correct? It's a state law. It's a state law. It's a so, state mm -hmm. law. It's not like liability. It's your choice. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a contract, they require you to carry a liability. Mm -hmm. Workers' comp is required by the law. By the state law. So by the state law. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and the way workers' compensation works, it's based on number of employees and a payroll per year okay and your gross payroll and one thing i want to tell to contractors mm -hmm. and uh, which a lot of contractors get in a lot of problem and trouble right. with is when they confuse um subcontractors mm -hmm. with their payroll oh, okay they think uh, that when uh, well nobody explaining that to them and right they thinking if they have a subcontractor that they pay 10.99 okay they don't have to pay workers come on them. Gotcha. They do. They do. Okay. Only, only if they don't. Okay. They have to pay uh, workers come on those subcontractors uh -huh. if the subcontractors don't have their own insurance. Oh, gotcha. So that is considered to be your payroll. Your payroll. So because I have that experience a lot, mm -hmm. uh, like people come to me and say, I have zero payroll. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, so I put zero payroll. And then at the end of the year, when the audit is done, mm -hmm. and they say, well, but I had a subcontractor costs who have no insurance, mm -hmm. their own workers' compensation, and I paid them out like three, five, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000. Right. So they end up have to do Having to pay that? Yeah. Okay, so that's actually something that's actually very interesting. Yeah. Um, so you're saying, okay, if I'm a general contractor right. and I'm hiring a subcontractor right. that has workers' comp, right. I, don't have to, I, don't, I don't have to worry about right. it. But if I'm a general contractor and I hire a subcontractor that does not have workers' comp, Correct. I would have to end up paying that on my Correct. on my side. Oh, okay, cool. So that's something that I wasn't even totally aware of. Um, so that's actually a great point. Thank you for telling me that. Yes. Now, um, a quick question, because I get this question all the time. Mm -hmm. um, let's say I start my own general contracting business, uh, business and I have three partners. Would mm -hmm. I have to pay the workers' comp on the partners? No. Okay. Uh, it, because owners excluded usually. Okay. Oh, unless you want to be them excluded, but uh, in all my fifteen years, I never. Because you're not right. going to go sue yourself, right? Exactly. For Definitely. Like injuries. Exactly. You don't want to die. Yeah. So now, you know. now that th does that only apply to uh, corporations, or does that will that apply to a solo ownership as yes. well? Now, um, there, in construction, there's a lot of verbal contracts, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, especially with a lot of the contractors that I deal with. So let's say I have a solo ownership, and I'm telling someone like, "Oh, we're partners. We're partners." but mm -hmm. we're just not registered as a partner. Mm -hmm. Would that help them protect them from any lawsuit in any case? No. Or no, that, that's just, at the end of the day, that would be an employee. All right, an employee. Yeah, so I always tell them With not to risk it. No. <laughs> With insurance, mm -hmm. if it's not written, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist, exactly. So that's why I, I try to steer them away from those verbal contracts because mm -hmm. a lot of us, you know, um, we tend to get a little lazy, especially when we're working with like family or friends and stuff Absolutely. like that. And I always tell them, even your family can turn on you. Even your friends can turn on you, uh, especially when, because in order to obtain your license, it's a, it's a whole process and you're putting your name at risk. So just to, to, to go through the process of 
you know, studying, passing the exams, getting insurance mm -hmm. and bonded and everything. And then just to risk it over, you know, a friend that doesn't want to pay you a couple thousand dollars. Oh, it, it, it sucks, right? I it's have those stories from now until, I don't know. I and that you always them. hear them, right? I have so many stories mm -hmm. when friends, no, I, would, I really don't think in this type of business, you need verbal contract. Right, exactly. Everything wants written. to be written. Yeah. Everything wants to be written. And um, so when regarding the liability, so let's say you did say there, there were some differences. Um, so I know of the, in the contractor's exam, there's two, right, that they really touch up on. Is the general liability and mm -hmm. then the umbrella. Um, mm -hmm. Do you guys sell that as a package or how does that work? Is it workers, con is it, I'm sorry, is it the liability plus umbrella or can you buy umbrella separate or how does that work? Uh, well, okay. General liability, the maximum limit on it is two million. Okay. Usually. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a two million. What it means, umbrella, it's basically anything. Some contracts require you if you're building sky rise, for example, mm -hmm. and the contract requires you to carry five million, ten million, a mm -hmm. general liability policy. So what that excess umbrella policy does, it uh, actually uh, provides limit on top of your. R um, liability policy general liability mm -hmm. policy. so let's say like it's your general access. liability covers two million mm -hmm. your umbrella would cover the rest or does yes. the umbrella have a limit as well no 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 it has it has you, you give how much limit you want for oh example, gotcha so you have 10 million your, your liability covers up to two million mm -hmm. so that's a maximum because they cannot go more than that right then you buy an excess liability will mm -hmm. cover you for another eight Oh, exactly. another eight million. So exactly. wh whatever the rest of the contract exactly. is. Now, do you do you buy that in terms of a year, six months, or is it for a specific contract? Uh, there is different terms. Different. Uh, there is six months. There is usually a year. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. companies they do it per month. Per I month. But that's not 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 very few. And so is it is it more if they do it per month? Is that what yeah, it is? I, I yeah, think yeah, it is. It's I better when you do it like a fixed term, like for six months yes, or a year. I gotcha. Think so. I okay. think it's always better. And it's for li like in a liability. It's not just liability. There's right. liability can cost you thousand uh dollars. Uh-huh. And there's liability can cost you more than ten thousand, twenty thousand. A month? I know, or a, or year, a year, a year, gotcha. You know, so it all depends what you do, structural work, if you mm -hmm. do commercial, if you do track homes, apartment buildings, mm -hmm. condos. It's many things goes into underwriting. So sometimes, you know, like clients go, oh, you know what, my friend, he had liability only $1,000. Right. Like, what does it cover? And exactly. Uh, maybe it does it cover um, lawyer's cost mm -hmm. or it, the one million includes the lawyer cost. You know, gotcha. like there's many, there's many different factors that Absolutely. kind of play. Now, do you guys give like a, like a, can you, can you pick and like choose what you want or is it just like, okay, this package contains this, this package contains that. It's more like you explain to me what you do and gotcha. I tell you what you, what, which one you need to have. So like, uh, I don't know if you can, but let's say like, um, you know, a lot of our contractors take out the general B license because mm -hmm. they construct residential homes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Residential homes. So will the liability also play in factor with how many employees you have yes. or is that normally what you do with uh, whatever you focus your business around? It's uh, some insurance company based on your sales, gross okay. sales. Some of them pay, uh, based on payroll gotcha. as well. And what type of work, you, of course, you do. Okay. For example, with a hundred sales, sales general contractor mm -hmm. who just small remodeling, for example, it will be $2,000. Mm -hmm. But if it's the same uh, 100,000 sales mm -hmm. doing ground up construction it right. will cost him seven and a half and plus or five gotcha because they're there because the insurance has to cover the entire property right from the ground up so from the very foundation of it it'll cover everything from when uh you're constructing a new property correct for yeah depends if that depends what on that, that's policy. what they purchase mm -hmm. so each trade will probably have a, a different cost when it comes to their liability Absolutely. insurance now like let's say for a new contractor that just got licensed mm -hmm. what insurance would you recommend what, what are the basic packages that w that you would recommend to a new contractor that might not have employees that's mm -hmm. just starting off what's the package that you would recommend ba to them? basic insurance company ba okay. basic insurance general liability that covers him again I, I need to know which what they will be doing what they're right. planning to do oh, okay so it's it's hard to to so give you like a like a flat rate on something like that yes it's gotcha not, it's yeah, it's but the basic package would include like just the general liability to cr to. Uh, it's always know. general. It's always mm -hmm. the limits are usually always the same, like two gotcha. million a general aggregate, one occurrence, one product completed operation, hundred mm -hmm. or three hundred um, damaged rented to you, mm -hmm. 
and 5,000 medical. N That's uh -huh. usually the limits. Are, see, limits are always might be the same. Right. But what it covers, that's what. And that depends on per, a per trade basis, right? Absolutely. Depending on what they're Absolutely. doing. So you did say the occurrence policy. So here we teach him about two different types, which is uh, uh, claims made and occurrence. Which right. one do you recommend? Uh, occurrence. Occurrence. But it's also sometimes their requirements are different. Oh, the okay. So sometimes they want it based on occurrence. Some sometimes they want it on claims made. Yes. And that's only if like a specific contract has that requirement. Right. correct right. gotcha so let's say for example um i have an occurrence policy mm -hmm. for the entire year mm -hmm. and i want to get a specific contract would i have to purchase like let's say a claims made if i wanted to obtain that contract if that's a requirement uh yes you can purchase for uh, uh get if that doesn't cover by your policy uh -huh. you can get a separate project based oh policy. okay mm -hmm. so you say that's that's good because a lot of our contractors once um I, I don't think they see it right out of the gate right mm -hmm. as soon as they get it's the license but as soon as they start building their company and they're getting those bigger contracts they need someone to come and kind of explain to them like the differences of insurance um so we kind of like uh touched up on all the bullet points on what you do so if somebody like let's say wanted to contact you on how they can uh, uh, get your information go ahead and give them your address your uh and any other means in which they can contact you well, uh, you can call my phone, my office. Mm -hmm. My number is 310-247-5507. That's my office number. And uh, you can email me at Ancor insurance at yahoo.com e-n-c-o-r-e mm -hmm. insurance spelled out at yahoo.com that's my email definitely thank you so much for coming on the podcast on the podcast i really do appreciate it for making the time thank, thank you, you so much time. i appreciate it thank Thanks. you